In this video, we'll be taking a look at Cathay Pacific's A350 business class on a flight from Hong Kong to Singapore. We'll also be taking a look at the new Hong Kong Skybridge. That's the view you're seeing here. And we'll get into what's been going on with Cathay Pacific recently, discuss the rough patch they've been going through and their uncertain future. Oh, there's a the Skybridge thing. Wow. Okay, that thing looks sick. I gotta get up there. Should've put runners on. This airport is huge. Whoa. <laughs> this is sick. This is sick. What? Oh my God, there's a glass bottom floor. Let's give me the heebie-jeebies. I'm not leaving until a plane goes underneath us. So this is the new Skybridge at Hong Kong Airport. It was opened in late 2022 and it connects Terminal 1 with the Terminal 1 Satellite Concourse area. It is the most ridiculous thing that I've ever seen at an airport, really. It's 200 meters long, it's 20 meters wide, and it's 28 meters above the ground. So all aircraft can pass underneath it, including an Airbus A380. I really, really enjoyed just standing around and checking the view out. It's incredible. If you come to Hong Kong Airport, you have to check this thing out. One thing, the taxiway underneath isn't the most active, so you might have to wait like 10 minutes to see a plane pass underneath. You. I was there for about 20 minutes and two planes passed underneath me, so, I mean. Okay, that was sick. Let's go eat some food or something. Are you ever tempted to walk into the Gucci store and just buy something? Like, I can't afford it. But I've got, you know, $15,000 credit limit, so I could just buy it. <laughs> 15000 probably isn't even enough. Now, Hong Kong has way too many lounges. I think Cathay has like four or five specifically here. And then there's also the Qantas one. I just know they've got watermelon here. And I really want some watermelon, so that's why I've come to the Qantas one. Okay, we've got like half an hour to chill, so see ya. So I spent way too long at the Skybridge thing and then also had to go to the Qantas Lounge and spent too long there. <laughs> and now I've got like five minutes to get from gate one to gate 40. I think it's like a kilometer. Let's go for a little jog through Hong Kong airport. Why is there a TripAdvisor store? Are they selling advice? <laughs> yes, she is. Let's go board. Okay, the facial recognition thing gives me the heebie-jeebies. You don't even scan your ticket. It just knows your face. It's really kind of... I don't like it. <laughs> but it seems to be the way in Hong Kong. Yep. Service Manager yeah. Cheryl will shortly be giving this aircraft safety briefing. I want to serve again until just prior to our design, but an update on the arrival conditions. In the meantime, please sit back, relax, enjoy the service. Thank you. This is a non smoking flight. Pretty empty. As with pretty much every flight, the meal service started as soon as we hit cruising altitude. But before we get into the flight, I want to quickly touch on what's been happening at Cathay Pacific. Cathay, along with all of the Chinese carriers, were severely impacted by the pandemic due to China's strict border quarantine rules. With Cathay being an exclusively international airline, this meant that the number of passengers carried dropped from 35 million in 2019 to under 1 million in 2021. In 2020, they underwent drastic restructuring, including laying off over 8,000 employees, closing Cathay Dragon, and cutting pilots 
pilots' pay by 40%. Arguably, Cathay really didn't treat their staff and more specifically their pilots well during the pandemic. A lot of the pilots were kept flying due to strong cargo demand, but due to quarantine rules, pilots had to endure terrible working conditions with multi-week isolated stints in hotel rooms. This, on top of the pay cuts and layoffs, does not do wonders for morale. Singapore Airlines had a similar pay cut for pilots during the pandemic, but have since reinstated the full pay rate now that things are getting back to normal. Cathay has not done the same. Reportedly, Cathay had around 4,000 pilots pre-pandemic. A thousand of these were laid off during the restructure and another thousand left of their own volition due to the pay cuts and tough working conditions. Cathay's essentially lost half of their pilots during the pandemic and it's really coming back to bite them now. Over the Christmas period of 2023, Cathay had to cancel 160 flights due to pilot shortages. There is some good news though. Cathay finally stopped hemorrhaging money at the start of 2024 and are trying to rapidly hire and train new pilots. The worst for Cathay is hopefully all in the rearview mirror. There is one last point I want to touch on and that's just the generally the shaky future of Cathay. I believe a big part of Cathay Pacific's future is tied to the future of Hong Kong itself and I think that this probably means that Cathay will eventually end up being acquired by Air China. You see, the big three Chinese airlines, Air China, China Southern and China Eastern, are all state owned and controlled. Air China already has a 30% stake in Cathay and as Hong Kong becomes less economically important to China and hence more integrated into China itself, I just don't see a world where Cathay Pacific stays independent. This would have some interesting implications, especially with airline alliances. Cathay is a founding member of One World, but may be forced to leave as Air China is a Star Alliance airline. But look, we're just getting into pure speculation now. Who knows what the future will hold? Let's just go and see what a recovering Cathay service is like now. The meal service started with a sparkling water and some pretty good warm nuts. I just topped it up and she decided to top it up a bit more. How lovely. So to start, we've got the smoked salmon with green apple, fennel and celery salad. Except there's tomatoes and what looks like either cabbage or lettuce underneath with radish. It's, I'm not even sure if that's fennel. It's definitely not celery but I like it more than celery because I don't like celery. So it's like tomato instead of apple. And yeah, what's sort of like a cold slaw underneath it or something? Or maybe that is, actually that could be apple. Maybe it is apple actually. Yeah, that could be apple underneath, like shredded apple. Oh, yeah. This service is incredible. They're like on it. I finished less than 30 seconds ago. Anyway, they also brought around bread. It's warm and it looks very good. We got garlic bread and just a normal bread roll. Oh, wow. Yeah, thank you. Oh, sure, maybe like a half glass? Um, no, I'm okay, actually. Thanks. I'm just trying to butter my bread and I'm getting run up on with red wine offers and then mustard, like chaos. Just a great bread roll. Let's try the garlic bread next. I mean, it's garlic bread. I prefer it to be slightly crunchier, but it's garlic bread. It's good, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I don't drink wine, but she recommended it with a beef, so I drink wine now. It's 3.40 p.m., you know, nothing wrong with drinking some wine at, in the afternoon. On a, oh, it's a Thursday. That's a bit better than a, than a Monday. I have to say, though, that beef is incredible. Actually, i got to film it. Too much stuff is happening too quickly. The beef is arguably cooked to like a medium well or a well done, but it's still incredibly tender and has like a really, really nice flavor. I don't know if it's a seasoning or just it's Australian beef. Come on, Australia. But, or it's like so tender, so beefy. It's got like a real strong beef flavor about it. That's an incredible, <laughs> incredible piece of meat. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say. So these vegetables, incredible as well. Like I don't even like these green string beans, but when you cook them this well and douse them in butter, douse them, douse them in butter, they're incredible. So I hold a pretty firm opinion that potatoes should be crisp. They, they have the ability to be crispy, so you should always crisp them. So these sort of just roasted potatoes that aren't very crispy, are not really what I would go to but if I was cooking, but the way that they've done these, like these ones actually have flavor. Yeah, I don't know what they've done, but the cafe catering from Hong Kong is so far incredible. Thanks for that. Thanks.
Like that's going to be like a nine out of ten for business class food. Oh, hello. We are doing so much food. Okay, what have we got in the way of fruits? Got a slice of mango, pineapple, peach, or apricot. What is it, nectarine? Nectarine, maybe. And then watermelon. I'm glad I finally got some watermelon today. I think this is like a white nectarine. Very ripe. I don't want to sound, I don't know, overzealous, but the juiciness got me there. <coughs> I was not expecting it to be that juicy. I've got my two favorite fruits left on the table right now. I reckon watermelon and mango. I literally could not tell you which one I prefer more. I love them both. Yep. Delicious. So the fact that we took off less than an hour ago, or about exactly an hour ago, and I'm finishing up my dessert. And then it was like a three course meal. It's just ridiculous, hats off, amazing service on Cathay. Here in the front lab, it's very nice actually. A350 Airbus and putting windows in the toilet. Uh, not sure what was up with that, but that's a great view while you're doing your business. And yeah, we've got the three, got hand wash, antiseptic hand gel and a body lotion. That's what you get because we're in a business class toilet. Uh, it's a bit bigger than your standard, I think, a bit wider. And yeah, the inclusion of that window is quite nice. Though when I got in here, it was closed. The shutter was closed, so it was like that, which um, makes it a little bit, I don't know, cozier. They're closing all the windows, which I just, I don't like. I get why people just want to sit and watch TV in the dark. It's a lot nicer that way, but um, I just fall asleep in the dark and, you know, got to make videos, so can't just pass out for the next two hours. Okay, the entertainment is actually pretty good. It's a pretty nice UI, really pretty graphics. Look at movies quickly. We've got a pretty good selection of new movies. There's a few, I think, Chinese cinema sort of things. I guess this is part of the, um, the absolute mental investment that's happening into streaming. They're now doing partnerships with the airline, so we've got Disney Plus, and I think like Paramount Plus is on here as well. Basically, in terms of movies, there's a lot of good movies on here. You're not gonna get bored, but let's talk about TV shows quickly. I'm not so sure about the TV shows. They've got quite a few different series, but they do that thing where they'll just have, uh, this one they've got the whole season, but it's season six. So it's like, what? Like, give me a box set. Don't give me just like three episodes of a TV show. They do it a little bit. Yellowstone, look, Yellowstone, they've got seasons one and two. <laughs> they've got seasons one and nine of The Office. Super random. What? Why? They've got two live TV channels. It's just neat. We've got BBC News and CNN. And it's like actually live. It's not a replay because the time is the time is right. Oh, and then, yeah, finally, camera. They do have the top view and then front view, which is cool too. So they're pretty neat to just watch. I really, really like this seat. Here's a few of the reasons why. First big thing is this. This bit by the side of your feet. I like it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when you're sitting back here, your feet can't reach the... the but you can reach there. So it makes for like a nice little side ottoman just to rest your feet on when you're just lounging around. Second reason, you open it and it's this cavernous storage block. You can fit headphones, you can fit everything in there. Look at this. There's like tons of room down there. That was honestly like the most annoying thing about flying the Qantas first class seat on the way out here. There was no storage. There's more storage in this little Ottoman bit than there was in the entire <laughs> Qantas first class seat. So yeah, big fan of that. That does extend all the way out down there to form your bed. I haven't tried that bit yet. I will and then get back to you. Got a nice little table bit here. And then you open this bad boy up. It's where your headphones go. There is a USB charger. There's a mirror. We've also got a little control panel here and the screen thing, controller thing, uh, remote. It's one of those ones with a separate screen, quite like that. Seat control, a light. You come around here, you've got a big TV. It folds in really well. 
I don't know, folds in like that. Which, uh, I mean, yeah. I don't know why you'd ever fold it in, but you can. Press that, kind of springs back out, and then locks into place. It's probably just within arm's reach if you're sitting down. I also like this bit, so if you come down here, you'll see this little button here. Press that. A little bit of extra padding pops out there. I imagine that's nice when you're in bed mode. I'll try it. A bit of padding there, and then down here, this armrest, I think it has to be down during takeoff and landing, but you press this little button, give it a jiggle and it pops up, and there's also storage for a whole drink bottle that they gave me at the start. Evian too, kind of fancy, French. It's generally like a pretty comfortable, nice, it's a reverse herringbone seat, so it's in that one-to-one -one configuration. I really appreciate all the storage. Storage is really, really handy, and they've got a lot of it here. It's a lot of smart storage, just, you know, underneath things that are already there. The water bottle and the, the bit by, that, that bit on the side. This bit here just makes all the difference. <laughs> Having that much storage in just one nice block is so nice. Uh, everything is so within, just so within easy reach, basically. Really pretty impressed. Pretty impressed with this seat. Super comfy. One final little note. Charging. We've got, uh, what have we got? The, uh, like normal AC outlet, 110 volt. But there's also a USB port. Let's see how fast it is. I'm charging an iPhone off it right now. What have we got? What's the reading? I don't know if you can see that, but we're getting 2.42 watts. That's truly horrendous. That's like gonna struggle to charge your phone on a three hour flight, even like a six hour flight. I think at 2.5 watts, it's gonna take ages. Even five watts is pretty slow charging. 10 watts is re reasonable speed charging. And I think like fast charging is 18 watts plus. So two watts, two and a half watts is so slow. That's barely gonna charge your phone. Uh, that's one thing that they should definitely improve. But is it weird cost cutting or is it just the way that it's set up? I don't know, but. Let's uh, chuck this bad boy into bed mode. Ba, 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 da, ba. Uh. Yep. It's not bad. That is pretty good. I'm gonna have a nap and I'll let you know how it is. <sighs> All right, so it's 30 minutes to landing. I've just been laying here. It's actually been quite relaxing. I guess I did kind of neglect to mention the games are actually pretty awesome. Are pretty awesome on this system. Uh, they've got the golf game. They've got Tetris. They've got 2048. Like not crazy good selection, but like pretty nice. Bed. Let's talk about the bed. It's generally pretty good. Uh, you do have the classic business class footwell issue, which I mean, you're pretty much always going to get in business class, I guess. I don't know. I'm currently trying them all to see if there's any that are really, really good. The footwell here is not super tight though so I'd actually find it all right I think overnight especially because you've got so much leg room this way so you can really lay on your side get your knees up into here again huge fan of that if I come back over here that thing basically doesn't do anything it just looks nice I guess yeah it's a pretty long bed if you see that I'm like six foot there's still probably like another seven inches or something. The blanket they give you is pretty light. The pillows could be bigger and there's no mattress pad or anything, but the actual bed is fairly, uh, it's right, it's efficient. Let's uh, return to the upright position. Oh, wow, okay. So you don't actually have to hold the button down. Okay, wow, you just press it once. If you hold it in long enough, it just keeps on going. I mean, I'll take that. Oh my God, it's bright out there. I'm really happy with this Cathay Pacific flight. I really like Cathay Pacific. I haven't flown them in ages. I actually flew them probably 2014 or something, 2015. It was like one of my first times ever flying business class. And so I remember the first time I was sitting in this sort of seat. The, the one on the A380 really reminded me of it. Just how like mind blowing it was. How crazy business class is.
So that was it. That was my experience flying Cathay Pacific to Singapore. I've got to say overall, it was a great experience. It's the Cathay that I know and love. I've been reading all this stuff about them being in a downward spiral, but nope, it's not the case. Uncle Simon says so. Uncle? I'm a bit too young for that. Maybe Cousin Simon says it's all good. Go fly Cathay Pacific. They're still as good as they were years ago. Quickly, how much did this cost? Like for pretty much all of my business class flights, I booked this using Qantas points. It was 43,800 points plus 550 Hong Kong dollars in fees. That's a bit over 100 Australian dollars. So it's a pretty good deal. I did, I did book this as a multi-city thing originally, which turned into an absolute mess. I'll explain that more in a probably three or four videos time. Check out flightformula.com. We've got some cool tools that help you get Qantas points. And there's also just some blog posts there about ways of collecting points and using points efficiently. And it's not always just get a credit card. Anyway, subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.